Now, I'm guessing that you had Pride and Prejudice based on the author's name. What language is this in? It's Ederp Isidujerp. Well, actually, it reads Pride and Prejudice backwards. It's really not a good thing to make your public and your reader feel stupid. And I felt a little stupid, like, how come I don't know what language this is? I'm a fine artist. I don't design on assignment. I work with words and text. So you're special compared to everybody else? No, I'm just me. What you did is you defaulted to something that you love to do, which is to write backwards. In terms of just sheer beautiful, I have not seen pink look so drab in a long time. Well, thank you, Judith. Mark, why don't you tell us about your Dracula? I thought it was important to make uh, the image as contemporary as possible and not cliched. Even though Dracula is a cliche at this point, with the blood, with the black and white. Number one, it's the most commercial work that's here, and that was the challenge. I love how the posture of him is rather erotic. I think he is an erotic image. I think, in a way, it could have been almost cooler with less blood, and you just could have had the line of blood doing the D coming down. It would have been an even more sophisticated, uh -huh. less pulpy cover for me. But this is a very direct cover for Dracula. Thank you. Thank you. I thought it was a little serendipitous that I got this book because it contains stories about very morally ambiguous characters. That's um, something I'm very concerned with in my own work. I actually want to get to you taking a picture of yourself and coming up with that. The reason I didn't just use the photograph was because I feel that ink wash is a very seductive medium. But on the other hand, the semi-nude picture of yourself would have had so much more moral ambiguity and so much more cutting edge. I think you wanted to show yourself and you backed out. And what you left us with is something generic, and that's a problem. Why did you not double check the spelling of the author's name before you wrote it? Oh gosh, I'm so embarrassed. It's Austin with an E, not an I. I, wow, I don't even know what to say. Judith, you had the same book as Jacqueline. What do you think about her piece? It, I just feel like the drawing approach and then the application of the paint seems really not skilled at all. Thank you. Peregrine, will you please tell us about your Time Machine cover? I really wanted to create something that would have a little bit of depth. It would be photographed and there would be shadow behind it and that would be the image of the cover. Peregrine, as a book cover for the Time Machine, it's a complete failure. I think that you've made a very elegant, interesting looking object that has nothing to do with the book. The Time Machine is the classic science fiction novel and you don't read sci-fi anywhere in this image. This is cutesy wallpaper. We're trying to get the reader to pick your book up. Wallpaper is what fades out behind us. Thank you very much, Peregrine. We have plenty to discuss. You can head back up to the studio until we call you back. Thank you. I really want you to think about, like, you know, what you could, could have done differently and, and to stop, you know, it's just, we're just trying to like teach you, teach yeah. you to, to um, I don't know, push you to question why you do things. Okay, how did the artists do this week? This was really a relevant challenge to these artists. Artists doing jacket art for novels. Picasso did it, Miro did it. It was a sort of honorable thing for an artist to do, to sort of collaborate, to make a beautiful, beautiful book cover. Okay, let's talk about some of our favorites. Mark was one of the few people in this challenge to integrate the text and the image. We all love the photograph. We all love how he treated that. It definitely draws you in. The doors are open. There's this kind of sexy fellow holding this stuff. It jumps out at you. As soon as I saw it, I thought, that's a book cover. What about John's piece? 
What I like about John in the time machine is he gave us this head from uh, the planet Pineapple, <laughs> and he's calling it the time machine, and I'm looking at it thinking, okay. It's instantly resting. I'm very much in love with the little ladder because it's this little quirky touch that changes an abstraction into a thing, which is something I love. What do we think about Jacqueline's Pride and Prejudice? I am seeing her in a live model drawing class in middle school. And come on, you can't misspell the author's name. If you can't get Jane Austen's name right, I, I mean, I don't know how you can defend your piece. Judas. You know, when you're doing a cover and you, you turn the title backwards, it just made me cringe. When you look at it, you don't know that it's for Pride and Prejudice. I think it's just her way of saying, I'm not going to play. And I'm all for breaking the rules, but if you're gonna break them, show up with something that's more interesting. Let's talk about Peregrine's Time Machine. I always thought the Time Machine was a dark novel, and this is the first time I've ever seen it as a sort of a happy, peppy, let's go to the petting zoo. It is not a fairy tale. Just burn this, you know. I mean, it looks like an arts and crafts project. Get rid of it. Okay, I think we've made all our decisions. John, Mark, you both created cover art as engaging as the words on the page. But there can only be one winner. Congratulations. John, you made a true work of art. That means that your book will be published by Penguin and sold nationwide. That is quite an honor. <laughs> it's wild. My dad's a librarian, historian, so I have a big history with books. To have one of my designs grace the cover, I'm overjoyed. Congratulations, John. It's a terrific cover. It's got that thing that's going to pull people in right across the room. Thank you. Thank you both. You can head up to the studio and please send your colleagues down. Ladies, I told you. Yeah. You're the winner. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well, come in for the hug anyway. We don't want to leave the outfit. Oh, no, no. He yeah. deserves it. He deserves it. But now the, the bad news. We have to go downstairs. The judges would like to see the three of you downstairs. Good luck, ladies. Your work would put these classics out of print. Chocolate. It sounds like you started it out to give us something special, but it ended up as a cliche. Peregrine. You were given an exciting sci-fi adventure, and you gave us a dull fairy tale. Judith. Both as a painting and as a book cover, your piece fell short. Jacqueline, Judith, Peregrine, one of you is leaving us tonight. Judith, your work of art didn't work for us. It's time for you to go. Well, I guess I just wasn't able to adapt to the situation. But thank you very much. Thank you, Judith. Yeah. I'll see you on the Lower East Side. I will probably. Sweeping the sidewalk. I am disappointed about leaving. Boy. Maybe I didn't really belong in this kind of situation, away from, Still. you know, my own process. I am an established art maker, and my life is about making art. I wouldn't have thought that my piece would be the one to send me home. Jacqueline's piece stayed. I mean, please. Next, on Work of Art. I'm really excited that we get to see work by Andre Serrano. He took a crucifix and put it in a jar of his own piss. We want you to create your own shocking piece of art. Woo! 
I want to make a work that would shock myself. <laughs> I feel that we end up objectifying ourselves. Ah! Oh. I have some news that may come a bit of a shock to you. Wow. So because you shout out all the time? Don't ask me for oh advice. I think that's a bag of oh. I don't smell anything. To learn more about work of art, the next great artist, visit bravotv.com. Matches, pretty matches.